Hello everyone, this is Mohammed Nasser and I'm a Senior Solution Consultant here at ServiceNow specializing in security operations. This is my series dashing through the workflow and I'm going to be taking the month of December where we are going to be learning a bunch of different features that are within the ServiceNow uh, platform and how we can utilize them in our operations. I'm starting the series strong with the how to integrate with ServiceNow using our REST API Explorer. I wanted to set this as an example of how we can utilize this feature. So just for education purposes, I'm actually going to go ahead and build an integration that allow us to copy incidents that are created on one ServiceNow instance onto another ServiceNow instance. Now this shouldn't be much of a difference when we are trying to build the same integration between a ServiceNow instance and another web application. The reason for that is that ServiceNow makes it easier for you by basically providing a bunch of different code samples which can be utilized for different web applications. For today's purpose, we're going to focus on ServiceNow script, but just to show you or give you an idea, we also support C, C URL, Python, Ruby, JavaScript, Perl, and PowerShell. Now I'm going to walk you through the REST API Explorer page and some of the information that you'll find on it. Starting with the namespace, namespace basically allows us to focus our integration on a specified uh, scoped application within the platform. As you can see, these are some of the different scoped application. Since this is just a general um, tutorial, I'm going to just keep it on the now. Then we can specify which API name that we are uh, looking to do, either table SP API, uh, syntax editor, UI glide record API, it really depends on which table API that you want to reference. I'm also keeping that at, at table API. And then we can indicate which API version we want to go with. This is going to be the partial endpoint for the selected API. And this is where we are able to look at the share link, look at the API documents or even access the API analytics dashboard. Now, just to give you an example, I'm going to go ahead and actually retrieve a record. It looks like it's already on the get function. And then I'm going to specify which table I want to get that record from. Since I just want to test out if this is an accurate function and if it is working properly, I'm just going to go ahead and look for the incident table. I can specify the different parameters or the query parameters that is going to be uh, used to call that specific record. I can either look for one or uh, pull in 10 at a time. I'm just going to keep it a one. After that, we're going to specify what are the fields that we are looking to pull from that record. As you can see here, I have the option to choose these fields right from the available ones. I'm just going to get to when it was updated, the state, maybe the priority. And finally, let's do the overview. Click on save. So these are the fields that are going to be pulled. We can scroll down and see the status code 200. OK, that means that we have we were successful. And that we were able to actually get that record. Now let's go ahead and go over an example of creating a record through the post request. We're going to specify which table we want to create the record on. I'm keeping it simple throughout this entire workshop. So I'm going to focus everything on the incident table. So I'm just typing out incident, but we can see here, this is an example of the different tables that we can create to and get information from. So is it the regular incident table? Is it in the case of SecOps, the DLP incident table? Is it the security incident table? You get to decide which table you really want to pull that or create that information on. Keeping it simple, again, we are going to focus on the incident. Now, if we scroll down, we are going to see the request buddy, which basically tells us all of the different information that we are going to be creating on the actual record. 
Uh, again, I'm keeping the request format and the response format as application JSON because we are working on two ServiceNow instances. Now within the builder, I can specify which are the fields that I want to create. So I'm going to add a couple here and then let's go ahead and fill them out. Starting with maybe we want to add the description. We can see that the uh, value here is going to be a string. I'm going to say test and then maybe specify the priority and I'm going to say it's a priority three. Maybe the contact type let's say email now obviously we can change that maybe if we want to say or if in the case of we are building an actual integration we can have the contact type as the name of the integration that we are building let's look for urgency and let's keep this at a one and then finally we can add the impact. Let's also say that this is a two. Now we can see everything that we're doing here is being translated down here in a code format. We'll see why this is super handy in a second. Just double checking every information here is accurate. Now let's go ahead and click on send. Just confirming that we are uh, curating a record here. Click on OK. So the status code now is 201 created. That means that we were successful creating this record. Now, since we are interacting with, again, two ServiceNow instances, I'm going to be looking at the code sample for the ServiceNow script. So if I click on it, this basically is going to show me how, according to the API, we are supposed to request, or in this case, create a record. I'm going to go ahead and copy, select the snippet and control and copy. Now, one thing I wanted to uh, draw your attention to is the fact that the var username and the var password, um, every time you create this, you would actually have to modify that based on the actual uh, integration, a username and password. Now, I don't want to give the uh, other tool for access to this instance or in this case the other instance full access to this instance uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually show you how we can create what we call a service account so if I look for users I am going to be able to create a specific user that is going to only be allowed to access information specific to this integration so we can go ahead and click on new. And then we can say user ID. In this case, let's just say example integration user. We can add in a username, uh, sorry, a first name, a last name, a title. And I'm going to make sure that we have this turned on, indicating that this is only going to be accessible through the web service. Save. And just to make sure that this actually has the uh, appropriate access right to be able to create, delete, or get information from different records, I'm going to give it an ITIL access. Click Save. And then we can set a password. Let's go ahead and actually generate one. I'll copy that, save password. And I'll copy that into a text note. So now when we want to actually interact with this code or use this code to build the integration, we can substitute the username with example integration user and the password we have just created. Now let's set up the stage and go into the script background. And there 
press ls I'll open that in a new tab and then we'll take the code that we've copied make sure that you change the username to the username that we have created making this easier and the password is going to be the password that we've copied click on run script this means that we've already completed the scope global script which means that we were able to create the record now we can jump onto the other instance where we're actually going to be creating the rule that once triggered is going to call the api that we've just created and allow us to create the connection that we wanted to do so um in this other instance i'm going to go ahead and navigate to the business rules business rules that should be under system definition perfect just give it give it a couple of seconds to load Let's click on new and then name this new business rule I'll keep it simple and say create incident from another service now the table that we want this uh, business rule to be triggered on is going to be the incident table now this also or this feature could also be utilized in case of we have been using ITSM to create security incidents and we've upgraded into the SecOps solution. Uh, we can utilize this actually to move incidents from regular table incidents to the security incident table based on some of the criteria. Make sure advance is active. Oh, when do we want this to be actually run? Let's say after and then we are inserting indeed. Now we can go ahead and copy the code that we have created here. Making sure that we change the username and password to the uh, integration uh, service account. Now we can also specify some of the conditions on when to have that API call run. So we can either specify that we want this to run based on maybe a date of an incident, uh, maybe on some of the conditions that we need to have satisfied to uh, initiate that connection. Now in the case of your integration, then we can say that maybe every time uh, we receive an incident or every time um, a new incident created based on a specific criteria or in a specific assignment group then go ahead and create that record now after we are done with everything that we want to indicate we can go ahead and submit and now we know that every time we create an incident on this instance it's going to be automatically created on the other instance now let's move on to the incident table. Let's look for the incident that we have created. Open this up. And as you can see, all of the different information that we filled in while we were creating the REST API from the REST API Explorer were translated into the incident here. And later on, we can do things that are very basic to the ServiceNow uh, platform. Like for example, if we want to create a new channel, we can actually change the label, add in a specific choice based on if maybe this choice only uh, applicable to the API that we have created. But these are all native ServiceNow functions. 
that you can learn more about on the documentation site. Thank you everyone for being part of today's episode of Dashing Through the Workflow. Uh, again, my name is Mohammed Nasser, and I hope I provide you with more value through the rest of the series. If you have more questions about the REST API Explorer, please do reach out to uh, your ServiceNow expert, or please do check our ServiceNow documentation site and the community site, which has a lot of different articles that walk you through the different steps of the REST API Explorer function. Please let me know if there are any other features that you might be interested in seeing more information about, and I look forward to seeing you on future episodes. Thanks everyone.